What's up, Dorsal Nation, and welcome to another great adventure. In this video, I show you guys exactly what gear and tackle I used in order to catch mutton snapper down here in the Florida Keys. Then I fillet the biggest mutton snapper I've caught so far, and I dissect the belly for you guys. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video, because Doris and I tried for the first time ever mutton roe, or fish eggs. We're gonna try it cooked and raw. In this particular area that we've been going to, it seems like every single trip we go there, we end up catching a legal mutton snapper. So I'm going to show you guys my favorite setup for shallow water mutton snapper fishing. And if you guys have been a fan of mine for a while and been following our adventures, you know I love to catch mutton snapper, and I'm usually used to catching them in deep water, so I'm always using my conventional combo for that. But today, this is I'm gonna show you my actual shallow water rig. So this is actually my snook combo that I use for inshore saltwater fishing. Catch big, big fish on this thing. A lot of you guys say that this is a really light rod, but this rod has a lot of backbone and does the job. So for the shallow water fishing, since it's 20 feet of water, there's really not a whole lot of current and I don't need a lot of weight to get down. So right here I have my 6000 Shimano Stella paired with my Travala jigging rod. And this is also from Shimano as well. So this is a great combo. We've even caught a 100 pound tarpon on this. So on the actual spinning reel, I have 20 pound braid spooled onto it as my main line. Then attached to my braid, I have a uni to uni knot with 40 pound fluorocarbon leader. And that's the lightest that I've been going down here in the Florida Keys, sometimes heavier, but all the big muttons you've seen is I've been on 40 pound fluoro. I have about a 10 foot leader. I would go much longer than that for deep water. I would go 20 feet, 25 feet, but for the shallow water, it really makes a mess. You don't want to go much longer than 10 foot. So after the uni, uni knot, 10 foot of 40 pound, and then we go down here, I have an actual sliding weight that I just adjust by basically, basically making one wrap with the fluorocarbon around the weight so I can slide it up and down to approximately where I want it to be. So depending on the current, that depends on the size of your weight. So this is about an eighth ounce weight. Sometimes you use a quarter ounce weight. It just depends on that particular day and what is going, out, going on in the water in the current situation. And so once I have, so I'll just slide this up about five foot. That way I can kind of cast it out away from the boat as well, give me a little bit of space to cast. And then at the very end, basically five foot away from the sliding weight, I have a uni knot attaching my five aught mustad circle hook in line. And I believe this is two times strong, great hook. And I basically match the hook to the size of the bait. And I was using big live pinfish. The bigger the pinfish, the better. The, big, the bigger the pinfish equaled a bigger fish most of the time. So I like to use the 5 aught and the 5 aught slayed all kinds of fish the last couple weeks. So that is the shallow water mutton rig. Now I'm going to show you how I clean my biggest mutton snapper ever and I'm also going to fill you in on a secret rule of thumb that is mandatory and required before you fillet any fish. Before you get started filleting fish, the rule of thumb is always to take a sip of your favorite beverage. For me, it's Landshark Lager, and they have supported us to come down here in the Florida Keys. It makes awesome videos for y'all. So good. And I'm gonna be using my Bubba knives today, my favorite fillet knives ever. Sharp knife is key here. I'm gonna be using a little bit of a longer blade because this fish is so big. And uh, today I'm going to be using the 9 inch tapered flex and then I also have my 8 inch whiffy for filleting off the skin here. But we're just going to get right to it and I'll show you how I like to fillet these bad boys and he also has a huge stomach. So at the end here I'm going to open up the stomach and hopefully there's something really unique and interesting in there but we're going to find out. And these guys have so much scales so it's a little bit tough to fillet them but that's why you need a sharp knife to get through. We just made the first cut right behind the pectoral fin. And now I'm just gonna work that knife right along his backbone. And just following the backbone, one nice long cut. Then we're just gonna follow the rest of the bones down and fillet off this piece of beautiful fillet. Oh my gosh, it looks beautiful. Wait until you guys see this. But I love catching mutton snappers if you guys been watching my videos and this one put up such a great fight and I really wanna get back out there and catch another. 
you can catch them this time of the year all the way up to 20 pounds. These fish get huge and they're predators. So with this May full moon, there's a big spawn going on and they move in shallow, shallow waters, the big boys do. So I really have an opportunity to catch another really nice fish. So I am stoked that this one is gonna be delicious to eat. And there's a bunch of pin bones right here too. I'm just breaking with my knife. This is where the flex knife comes in. I like it so I can bend the knife and get in there and make sure I get every ounce of meat. No wasting fish around here. And then I like to keep the innards intact and keep the rib bones on there. So that way we don't get that into our beautiful filet. Oh my gosh, look at that. Whoa, <laughs> that is a mutton snapper filet. Beautiful. All right, let's get, get this guy out of the way real quick. And we will just get him, get the skin off it right now. I'm gonna put it in a salt water brine. So that way it doesn't stay in the sun too long. But I just switched my knife to the eight inch Wiffy, which is gonna be perfect for filleting this off the skin. 45 degree angle. And then just keep the filet nice and close to you so you can have leverage to work with it. It's going right down, done. Beautiful. Oh, this is gonna be so awesome to eat, I can't wait. All right, now next step here is to just remove the pin bones and there is a bunch of pin bones right here in the front and with a sharp knife, you can just kind of cut around it and that way you don't miss a lot of the meat. You just get the bones out. There we go. That is such a beautiful snapper filet. And I'm probably just gonna go ahead and get a little bit of this bloodline out now. The bigger ones, bigger snapper like this, do have a little bit more of a bloodline. Uh, it'll be very fishy if you eat it, but you can just remove it. That's probably good for me. But this is will be delicious, just like so. That should be good. Now we're just going to take this beautiful, huge snapper filet and dip him into a five gallon bucket with ice and salt water. And basically it's just to like clean up the filet. You never ever want to take your saltwater fish fillets and put and rinse them in fresh water until you're ready to cook the fish. And reason being is because of osmosis and something happens with the fresh water and it enters the, the meat of the fish and it blows it up and it makes it taste not as fresh as you would think. So try that one day. You can make your own salt water or you can just get it from the canal like I just did. So now we're just going to fillet the other half off now. Let me get my other knife. But this has just been so awesome down here in the Florida Keys. We've been here the whole month of May following our dream and hopefully inspiring you guys to do the same. But as you know, if you watch my YouTube channel, my slogan is fish dream inspire. And at the end of every video, I'm like, follow your dream and keep on catching. And that's exactly what I'm doing. And I hope you guys do exactly the same as well. You know, you only live once, life is short. Uh, so you wanna take advantage of doing what you wanna do in this life. So for me, this is fishing, I love to fish. My dad introduced me to fishing, if you didn't know, and my dad recently passed away. So, you know, this brings back a lot of memories and I'm just gonna continue to do what I did with my dad when I grew up. And, you know, for me, this is like, follow, this is my following my dreams and I really am just blessed to be doing this full time. I never thought I would be. And now look at me, I'm here in the Florida Keys for a whole month, never been anywhere for that long. And we're down here making awesome videos, catching awesome fish for you guys to watch. It doesn't get any better than that. So whatever you want to do in this life, go and do it. And it doesn't have to be fishing. It can be anything, of course. Do what makes you happy. You gotta live your best life. Check it out. Wish I could share that with you guys. That's gonna be so good. I can't wait. This mutton snapper is definitely like one of the top, like one of the top five fish we really love to eat. For us at least. All done with the fillets. You can see through them, we did a good job. Next step is to open up the belly. Last step, <laughs> for me at least. So I just flipped it towards you guys so you could see first. All right, here we go. Could have a lot of stuff, could have no stuff. We just gotta find out. So I'm gonna get in this whole cavity. Wow, that is full of row, mutton snapper row. Look at that. Wow, I think that's really good to eat too. Let me just get rid of it. 
Wow. That fish was full a row. She was so hungry. Her stomach is right here though. Let's just clear that row out. All right, here's the stomach. It's not very full. There is something in it. We're gonna find out right now. That is hard. That might be a crab. And that seems to be it. Yeah, crab shells right here, as you can see. And the little live pinfish that I was using is not in there either. The fish was just very, very hungry. Yeah, the stomach's empty. Okay, well, that was pretty cool. It just apparently that was just full a row. Those are huge, beautiful pieces of row there that we could definitely eat. So pretty cool to dis dissect it and find out. All right, guys, time for your favorite segment, cooking with pudding. I don't have my hat because I'm down here in the Keys. I didn't bring all my hats, but I Googled how to cook fish roe because I never did it before. I got salt and pepper on the fish roe, and I put it into a, a little egg batter here. All right, just going to swash it around. And then I'm just gonna, almost like a chicken cutlet, just gonna put it on some, some breadcrumbs. See how this works. I've already turned on the oven and heated up a skillet. Put some olive oil in the bottom of it. So now I'm just gonna place this in there and they say it takes two to three minutes on each side. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do, here we go. All right, that did take about three minutes on each side. You want to use a medium heat. I put a little bit of scalding on it, but first time that happens sometimes. You ready to dive in? Sizzle? Yes. <laughs> All right, let's give me a fork. I'll use the spoon. All right, now you can also make roe in like scrambled eggs. They do all kinds of things, but this is our first time trying it. So we just want to try it by itself so we can see how it tastes. Here we go. It's not bad. It's pretty good. Like I can see like almost like a grits texture and you can mix that with eggs or a lot of different things and you have a nice really a nice meal. I might use butter next time but it's really quite good. Thumbs up on the row. Darcy Little, it's your turn. I liked it. It was really good actually. It's really yummy cooked and a little bit of a, the blackened on it is actually like give it a little bit of flavor too but that was not bad i'm a little scared to try it raw who's gonna go first that was so good you're definitely gonna try the raw first i am a little freaked out i don't know we're gonna have to discuss that you're the star of the show it just looks yeah all right we'll see you guys <laughs> <laughs> downstairs we're gonna try the raw let's go first i'm gonna try it on a cracker like caviar style then i'm gonna try it just plain raw here we go Nice. It's not like caviar. I'm from New York. I'm pretty fancy. I know about caviar slightly. It's a lot, dude. I'm just going to grab my land shark in case I need to wash it down quickly. Here we go. I'm not sure what it tastes like. If you have one of those palates that likes like uh, liver pate or caviar, then you might like it. It's an acquired taste, I'd say. I can see the eggs all over your teeth. Mmm, sexy. Now just raw. Not as good without the cracker? 
We're gonna speed up the land shark process. <laughs> Delicious. Kinda. <laughs> Your turn, Dar Sizzle. I'm not very excited about this. I'm gonna taste the really small amount. Mainly because I love sushi and I don't ever ask for flying fish roe. I ask, actually ask them to remove it. And I've never had caviar or anything fish eggs raw. So I'm not very excited. All right, here we go. sure what it tastes like other than mutton snapper fish row I don't know it wasn't um very appetizing to me but I got it down <laughs> I would have puked it up if I couldn't and couldn't and I, if I couldn't handle it but I could handle it so it wasn't terrible but let me know in the comments below if you guys eat raw fish row too or if you eat cooked fish roe, because really the only person I know who did that was Darcy's dad. So that's why really what gave us the idea. Yes. Every time we caught a fish with roe in it, he was like, you should eat that. It's amazing. Got to eat that roe. Yeah. All right. So let us know what you guys think about it. Uh, thanks for watching this video. We had a great time making it. Yes. And until next time. Until next time, follow your dream and, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching.